Hi, this is Tamara Kelly from MooglyBlog.com, and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the smaller bits of the chicken squish, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description where you'll find a link that takes you right to the pattern. If that doesn't work, you can always also search for MooglyBlog.com chicken squish. To make this pattern, we'll be using a USL 8mm crochet hook and about 220 yards of Bernat blanket. That's the total amount. You'll need one full ball of the whipped cream or whatever color you'd like to make the body of your chicken, and then just a few yards of the crimson and gold for all the little extra bits. It's also super helpful to have some stitch markers, and I used 24 millimeter safety eyes, so whatever size of safety eyes you prefer, or you can go ahead and embroider them on with a bit of extra yarn. You'll also, of course, need something to fill it up with. I used a 10 inch round micro bead pillow ball, or you can use your standard fiber fill or another round pillow. The finished pillow is approximately 10 inches around, a little bit bigger, excluding the comb, fins, and feet. Let's take a closer look at our chicken squish. The chicken squish is made in several pieces that are then sewn together and assembled, just like most amikurumi. The first three pieces that we make are all in the white, or again, whatever color you'd like your chicken to be. Now, the top and the bottom are almost identical. The top just has a couple more rows, and they're worked in the same style as a lot of the other squishes I've made. If you'd like a tutorial on how to get these pieces started, you'll want to look for the octopus squish tutorial, which is also linked in the pattern, as well as the tutorial blog post. The little wings are just like we made in the narwhal. You can see they're not actually stuffed. There's a pillow ball inside here, no stuffing, but these little wings are just crocheted crocheted in rather in the last round and then they're joined together as i say the top and the bottom are almost identical but before you sew those together you want to add on the extra bits so we have the top and the bottom that we made in the white and then the other piece is right back here our cute little chicken tail so let's start by making that one now yes i just said i made the tail in white but that's a little bit hard to see against this background so i'm going to go ahead and demonstrate it in the yellow or gold color to make the tail, we start row one with a magic circle. So I'm going to come in about six to eight inches from the end here and go over my forefinger twice towards me. Then I'll insert my hook under both of those loops. There we go. Grab that one that's furthest back and I pull it just forward of the other one, like so. You can see I'm holding onto the tail down here. Then I will yarn over and pull that loop through. Then I will go ahead and begin the rest of the written instructions. Chain one and single crochet in the ring. I wanna make sure that I work into the center of that circle and that I keep that tail on top of my ring as well so we can pull this up nice and tight. With that single crochet made, I can go ahead and remove my finger. That will hold the ring open. And I can go ahead and put my stitch marker right in the top of that single crochet. With the tail, we're working back and forth in rows, but it's just nice to have that stitch marked. Then we're going to half double crochet in that same ring Make sure again that that tail stays on top of our hook. There we go. And then we want to work three half double crochets into that ring as well. Or excuse me, three double crochets. We've worked a single crochet, a half double crochet, and now we need three double crochets. So there's one. Go right back into that ring for number two. The yarn's trying to get all involved before we're ready. There we go. And three. All right, so you can see we've kind of got that, that tail shape happening here. So we're going to be turning to work back the other direction. We're not joining, so we can go ahead and pull that magic circle closed. Give that a gentle tug here. I like to do it in little bits so I don't accidentally break the yarn. There we go, there it goes. Now it's nice and tight. So we can go ahead and make row two of our tail. To make row two, we're going to start with a chain one and turn, or turn and chain one, however you like to do it. And then we want to work two single crochets in each of the first three stitches. So let's go ahead and do that together. I'm not gonna bother marking this one because it's our last row and I don't need to find it again. So we go right into that first stitch for one and two single crochets. And then we do that again, one and two. And then one more time, one 
and two. There we are. And then we simply single crochet in each of the last two stitches. One and one, right in that last stitch. So we can go ahead and take that stitch marker out. We're all done with it. And then all we need to do is break our yarn, leaving a long tail for sewing. So you don't need a hugely long tail for this one. About 12 inches ought to do it. But you can go ahead and cut that yarn and set this piece aside to be added to your squish. The next piece we need to make is the comb that goes right on top of the head. So of course, I'm using a pretty red. This one's called Crimson. For this one, I've already got my slip knot on my hook, and we're going to go ahead and start with a chain of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. We're going to skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in the chain after that. So I'm going to skip that one right there and go right to the next one. So there's my first single crochet right there. Then I am going to work a repeat that starts with our asterisk. If you're following along with the written pattern, we work three double crochets in the next chain and then single crochet in the chain after that. And we repeat that all the way to the end. Not too long to go, so let's do that together. Three double crochets right in the next stitch. So we yarn over and go right into that next chain. And there's one and two and three. There we are. Then single crochet in the next stitch. And then, of course, we only need to do that one more time. Three double crochets in the next chain. So there's one, two, and three. You can see it really wants to curl up on me here. It gives us kind of that wavy look for our comb. So there's our third one. And then that brings us to our last chain and we'll put a single crochet right in there. There we go. So that's row one for row two of our comb. We chain one and turn or turn and chain one, however you like to do it, and simply single crochet in each stitch across. So we just want a single crochet all the way across to the end. However, we do have a little bit of prep to do for this one. In addition to leaving a long tail for sewing, we're going to want to make sure that this end gets sent to the bottom. So let's go ahead and finish up these single crochets together here. I'm just single crocheting in each stitch across. Oop, needed to pull up just a little bit more yarn from my skein there. And this is the only thing that I used the red for. So again, you only need a few yards to complete this comb here. There we are. So I've single crocheted in each stitch across. So to prep this piece in order to add it to our chicken later, I'm going to again leave a little bit of a long tail, a little bit longer this time. We want to be able to sew all the way across the bottom of that first row. So I'll leave a little extra. And then what I like to do is I'll go ahead and finish that off right here. There we go. And then I will get out my yarn needle. And of course, this is the end here. You can see this end was at the bottom of the row. This is gonna be handy for sewing down this end. With this end, it's at the top of our comb. So we simply want to get that on our yarn needle. It can take a little minute as a thicker yarn. There we go. And then I simply send it sort of through the fabric. You can just kind of weave it back and forth until it gets right down there to the bottom of the comb again. There we go, and gently pull that all the way through here. And now you've got two ends at the bottom of your comb to help you sew it right on to your chicken. And now we're back with our yellow in a piece you probably will want to make in either a yellow or an orange for the beak. We are going to start again with a magic circle. And again, I like to leave a little bit of an extra tail. It's just handy to be able to sew things on without having to cut a separate piece of yarn. So I've got my magic circle ready to go here. And once that's locked together, I'm just going to chain one and put a single crochet right in that ring. There we go. And then again, this one, we are going to be working all the way around again. So you really do want to use your stitch marker if you've got one handy. If you don't have one handy, you could certainly use a paper clip or a safety pin or even another scrap of yarn. So to continue on with round one of our beak, We've got our single crochet in the ring. Now we need six half double crochets all into that ring. So we just want to work right into the ring and make sure you enclose that tail in every one of those stitches. 
So I'll see you once we've got the six half double crochets put into our ring. Now you can see here, I've went ahead and made all my stitches and I closed up the magic circle in the middle, but we're not going to be joining with a slip stitch here, much like the body pieces, if you've watched the tutorial or read the pattern for those, we're going to continue working in a spiral. So for round two, we just start working right into that first marked stitch. What we're going to do for round two is simply work two half double crochets in each stitch around. So you go, can go ahead and just go right into that first marked stitch here and make your first half double crochet. And then it's really important to go ahead and move that stitch marker on up. Otherwise, it's very easy to get lost as you come back around and not realize that you've already gone all the way around and you just keep going. So there's that first one. We want to do a second one right back in that same stitch. And then do the same thing all the way the rest around. Two half double crochets in each stitch. So I will see you as we get to the end of round two. So now I've worked two half double crochets in each stitch around, and you can see just how handy that stitch marker is. It lets me know I've worked into each stitch. Now, as I was crocheting, it was curling up at me like this, but we're not turning this for rows. We're not working from this side. So we wanna make sure that when we go to add it to our chicken, we flip it back out this way so that it's right side out. Now, after finishing that last half double crochet for row two, we want to break our yarn, again, leaving a long piece for sewing. A little trick for something where you've got maybe a little bit more, you know, um, area for this, might need a little bit longer circle, and this works especially well for larger pieces. This one's pretty small, but I like to just go right around where I know I'm going to be seaming two, maybe three times if I'm a little worried, or if I think I'm going to be sewing it down extra firmly, perhaps to give to a smaller uh, child, then I'll go ahead and cut the yarn, and that way I know I'm going to have plenty of yarn left for sewing it on. So after you've cut the yarn for this one, we can go ahead and just pull up on that strand, pull it on through, and then we want to do the seamless join to give this a really nice finish here on our finished beak. So I'll find that end again, and get that on my yarn needle or tapestry needle here. And then what we're going to do is from simply going to seamless join to that first stitch. So we can go ahead and take the stitch marker out. We're all done with that for this piece. Find that first stitch, go under both those loops at the top with our yarn needle here and pull that loop all the way through. Now for this technique can be used in a variety of ways. For this particular piece, it doesn't matter in the end what the stitch count is. We just want it to look good and have the right shape. So we don't need to worry about maintaining stitch count with this loop or anything like that. We can go ahead and pull it nice and tight and then just send that needle right back into that same stitch it came out of, like so. I do have a separate tutorial for this if you'd like to see it a little bit clearer. There we go. And then, of course, you can go ahead and just weave that end in a little bit. And anytime you've used a magic circle on a piece to begin a piece, you should weave in your ends both ways before you attach it to anything, just to prevent it opening up later. This yarn has a lot of texture to it, so it probably won't happen, but it's always good to be extra sure. Get that all the way pulled through there. You can see I'm not going to keep weaving it in. I'm just going to bring it up to the edge of the piece here, like so. And then I know after I weave that center end in, I can go ahead and pop it right side out and it will be all set for sewing onto our chicken. The last pieces we need to make for our chicken are the feet, so you'll need to make two. And again, of course, I'm using my gold color. I've already got a slip knot on my hook, and then I'm going to begin crocheting. There's going to be three little toes here. It's a little strange, but it's really all one long, weird row. So let's make it together. We start with a chain of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Then we're going to skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in the next seven chains. So we wanna skip that one right there and come to the next. And I do recommend that you work into the back hump or the underneath hump, not the back loop, but the underneath hump of these chains for this section if you can. It's just going to give it a little bit of a better look for your foot. So there's one, find that next chain there two, get your work way into each of these chains here, three, four, five, 
six and seven. So since we skipped the chain closest to the hook and single crocheted in seven, you should have two chains left here unworked. Those are gonna remain unworked for just a little bit longer. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to turn and we want to loosely slip stitch in the first three single crochets. So that's gonna include this one right here. So we'll pull up on the loop there on our hook just a little bit. And when we loosely slip stitch, this is kind of the key. We're going to go right back in that first stitch and yarn over and pull up our loop and then pause. Just Don't just immediately pull that second loop through the first loop. Give it a little pause and a little wiggle before you pull it through and those slip stitches will be a whole lot easier to get back into. So there's one, we wanna do that again. Pull that up, give it a little wiggle, two, and one more time in the next stitch. Give it our wiggle, and there's three. Then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to skip the chain closest to the hook, the first chain there, and single crochet in the next four chains. So we skip that one. And again, I have flipped this chain over to crochet into the back humps. So there's one, two. With the fuzzy yarn, it may take you a moment to kind of look and find them, but just do your best there, three. Sometimes they like to twist around, especially as you've been crocheting into them. There we are. There's four. There we go. Then we single crochet in those three slip stitches. So you can see how it's kind of twisted around here. I'm just going to twist it right back around. It'll be absolutely fine. We're going to go right into those three slip stitches. Let me move that aside so it's a little easier to see here. We just want to go ahead and work a single crochet in each of those slip stitches. So there's one two, and three. You can see because we took the time to make those loose, they're nice and easy to work right back into. So we've got two of our little toes done here, but next we are going to work a slip stitch in that next unworked chain from the original chain 10 all the way back here. We're gonna find that next chain right there and just put a slip stitch right in that chain, like so. Go ahead and give that a little tug we're not going to be working back into that or anything. We want it to kind of wrap up here around the end of our foot. Then what we're going to do is do all that over again. If you're following along with the written pattern, it's the section that starts with the brackets. We turn and then we loosely slip stitch in those first three stitches. Go right into that first one there. Give it a little tug so it can be nice and loose to work back into one. two, and three, like so, just like that. Then chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in each remaining chain, which would be the next four here. Let's see, that one wanted to wiggle away on me. There we go, one, and two, and like I say, when things are dangling like this, they like to turn around on you sometimes. I just kinda let them straighten back out here before I go back in for that next stitch. Three, and four. Just as before, and then we need to single crochet in each of those slip stitches, one, two, and three. There we go. And then we slip stitch in that last chain, the one right down here next to our slip knot. So we're gonna find that last, or rather very first chain we made when we began our foot. There we go. And slip stitch right in there. Then we can go ahead and cut our yarn and make another one of these feet. Now with all our pieces made, it's finally time to assemble our chicken. 
So the first thing we wanna do is sew the comb to the center top of the top half of the body. Now you need to be sure to position it perpendicularly to the little wings on the sides. So at this point, this is going to be a soft piece. It won't have the ball inside, it won't be stuffed, but you'll still have these little wing sections sticking out on the sides. So you just wanna find the middle, and you can see here I use the stitches themselves to help me find the middle. And then as best you can, you want your wings to be on the sides and you want your comb to go this direction. You can see here, I did my best to actually center it right over that first round of the top of the body. And I simply used those ends, you can sort of see right there, to go right through and just whip stitch it right down to the body itself. I do recommend that you take your stitch markers and really line up each of these pieces before you sew them down as you go. And of course, don't weave on those ends until you've taken another look at it and made sure it's all lined up. So once we've got the comb added, then we can come around here to the front of the top of the body. And the way I determine the front versus the back of the body is simply back here is where that tail end was when I finished working the final round. So I decided to call this one the front. And again, this is where we're going to add those safety eyes and we just want to sort of use those wings and now the comb, you can see, bring that in right there. Use that to line them up, find the center point and then spread those out nice and evenly. You can try and count out the stitches if you want to. You can eyeball it. I put them approximately, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches or so apart. And I just find a spot right in between those stitches and stick through my safety eyes. Again, if you'd like, or if you prefer, you can embroider those on instead. Now the beak has to wait until the very end. It's the last part that we sew on. So after we finish the eyes, then, it is time to figure out the bottom half of the body. And I like to start with the feet right here. Again, this is from the bottom half of the body. It looks very similar to the top half of the body. It's just slightly shorter, but it's still got the wings on either side. So you can use those to help you line up these feet. Now you'll notice I said to make two identical feet, but they look slightly different. They actually kind of look like one's a right foot and one's a left foot. Well, here's that, let me get the tail ends out of the way here. Here's that foot we just made. There's one side. For the other one, we just flip it over. So then you can get what looks like two different feet, but they're actually exactly the same. When I sewed on my feet, I again sort of worked out right from the center here. You can see there's our beginning. So I'm about two rows or two rounds out. And then I used the long tails left on those feet to just sew down sort of the, I don't know my chicken foot anatomy, but the solid portion down here, leaving basically the toes to flap free. You can sew down the whole thing if you'd like, but I think it looks really cute with the toes left a little bit free. And again, you want to sew all these pieces on before you finally join in the final seam and put the ball inside, because it's a lot easier to do your sewing and tuck all these ends in from the inside. Finally, after you've added your feet, we need to add that tail, again, on the bottom half of the body. Now, if you look really closely, you can see right there is the seam where I whip stitched the top half and the bottom half of the body together. So that tail, again, centered between the little wings on the side, and you can even use the feet a little bit if you want to to help you with this, just sort of centered right on there about, about one row down. You can move this around if you prefer it a little higher or lower, it's up to you, but I went about one row down on the bottom half of my chicken. After that's sewn on, then finally we're ready to stuff and do the final seaming. Now, if like me, you left your long tail for sewing here at the back of the body, you'll be all set to start seaming it together. So what we want to do is use our stitch markers to match up our stitches one to one, and then just use the whip stitch to start sewing these two pieces together. The wing stitches should all match up and continue all the way around. Now I want you to sew to just past the second eye. So if you're going this direction, you'd end right here. If you're going this direction, end right here. Then go ahead and kind of set the yarn needle aside and then we're going to sew on this beak. You can see here how it sticks out a little bit 3D. We talked a little bit earlier about how it was cupping. We can go ahead and use that to our advantage to create this great beak shape. I also put the tail end of the beak at the bottom. It's a little bit flatter down there. Again, just helping create that great beak shape. So once you've got that sewn on, then you can go ahead and continue to sew all the way around. But before you get too far, don't forget to add your stuffing or your pillow ball. You want to leave yourself as much of that open as you can to put that in while making it easy to sew on that beak. So just continue to stitch 
all the way around until you've come to the end, and then you'll have just one end that you need to bury from the outside of your squish. And that's how to crochet the chicken squish. Again, that's a free pattern you'll find on mooglyblog.com. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.